Alright, ladies and gentlemen, now hopefully we are live on YouTube. Today we're on my free-to-play account because I've been massively slacking in terms of the story. Uh, and I need to pull a finger out and uh, get a bit of a move on because I haven't done chapter 10, 11, and 12. So yeah, we are going to zerg through chapters uh, 10 and 11 today. That's the plan. And then tomorrow, uh, maybe have a bit of a longer stream where we take on chapter 12 because I imagine on my free-to-play account, uh, that one might be a a little bit more of a problem, I would assume. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to see what happens. I think for the majority of um, uh, what is it, this run as well, we're probably going to use uh, apple pies. Let's get some alt food going. Are we uh, successfully live and everything? Let me just double check. Okay, it looks like we got the green light there, so we're, we're all good to go. Okay, chat's coming in now, boys. What is up to yes, no, crazy? Uh, hopefully you're all doing well today. Okay, we need Deanne for this one, so let's just chuck this blue one on the back here. But if I remember, uh, from what I can remember about Chapter 10, I think every fight apart from the one where you need to use Guild Thunder um, and, uh, what is it, Guild Thunder and Hauser was like Rush Eskinor as well. I think you can actually use Eskinor for that fight as well. <laughs> but yeah, I remember Chapter 10 not being too much of a problem. Chapter 11, a little bit more difficult and tricky toward the end. Um, and we don't have Lost Vein Meliodas on the free-to-play, so I'm not too sure how we're going to deal with some fights. But we'll, uh, we'll see what happens, man. I'm excited to go through with, uh, you know, much less power on my characters. But we still got UR gear on Escanor, and Escanor's a uh, character at this point. Chapter 10, most people should have, um, uh, you know, sorted out via Training Cave. What is up, Monster Gaming? Hopefully you're doing well. Fetch my socks, uh, Evo, the Blackout, Chaos... Uh, bloody Grand Cross, hopefully you're doing well. Nice to see uh, so many people in chat today, man. I'm on the part with Barn fighting Melasticula. Ah, yes, I think I know which part you're on. So that's uh, like midway through, maybe a bit toward the end of chapter 11. It's kind of around the, the start of chapter, the end of chapter 11, cha the start of chapter 12, where a lot of people are getting stuck at the moment. But I want to see how it is for my, um, uh, what is it, free to play with like. You know, much less gear in comparison to my main account. Is Valenti good? Uh, for the current meta, no. Um, in future metas, she does have a little bit of a comeback, though, if you built her with, like, full resistance sets. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd say overall, she's not really that great for a while and a bit of an inconsistent character to play. There are better units to invest in. But for certain scenarios, she's very fun for the, uh, what is it? The Grey Demon, and also today, because we've done a uh, full story playthrough um, uh, on the main account, and we got a lot of content, a lot of fights to do. We're going to be skipping all of the cutscenes, just so we can power forward as quickly as possible. Here we got the leeches to fight, so I think we go for... Uh, how much um, how much health do they have? Okay, yeah, I think we'll just do a mix of um, Escanor and Pierce stuff. So we're going for this, Pierce card, and I think we'll smash over here. Might get the two on the side down if we're lucky. Yeah, it should be fine. Got D Melly with Lilia. I think the D Meliodas is still going to put in so much work as well. Especially for a lot of the, the cleave farming stages. Okay, we got another Pierce card here. I think we've got all the damage needed actually to get this wave down as well. We go for this, chuck this over here, chuck the Pierce card. Should mop up that wave quite nicely. And I think we got one more coming down. Nice. Oh, we love a bit of Blue Demon Melee action. I, I feel like I barely use Blue Demon Melee for um, a lot of the most recent chapters on my main. He's uh, one of the only characters I got UR gear for on the free-to-play as well. Do I know that they added Zeldris in part two, but not the red one? Yeah, Blue Zeldris was added with the... Um, whenever, like, characters' banners end, uh, it's one that gets added immediately to part two. And then the other one, the Red Zeldris, he's not part two character. He gets added into the coin shop um, in two weeks from yesterday. So 13 days time. So not next patch, but the patch after. Because that's uh, that's how they split up the commandments. There's going to be one... Um, uh, what is it? Let's put in Liz here. There's going to be one in the coin shop and one in a part two ticket. So yeah, that's just the way that it goes on JP. Now let's chuck the Pierce gear on Liz here, and sub, um, we can literally just chuck anybody, just chuck Kowser there. Why not, mate? Let's go for it. 
Yo, what is up, uh, dumb thought tote? Thank you very much for the CA ten dollar super chat, sir. Hopefully you're doing well today. Simping for e girls? Nah, we out here simping for seating. This man knows. Thank you, uh, very much, dude. <laughs> Certainly do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, cheers. Hopefully you're having a good day, mate. Like I can't get through the part when villagers sacrifice holy knights. Is that the um? Villagers sacrifice early nights. Is that at the end of chapter 11? I need to do that today as well. And I know my um, Rune and Frazeria uh, aren't really stacked at all. So yeah, I'm not too sure how I'm going to get through that on my uh, free-to-play. But I think we're going to find out. Because I, I have heard that a lot of people get stuck there. But I, th I think on my main account, I just used Eskinor to carry that stage. But I'm not too sure if he's going to be like enough on the free-to-play. So yeah, we'll find out soon. <clears throat> But it should be a, uh, a, f a fun experiment. I think if we just go double pierce, <laughs> it should work. We fully cancelled out the turn there. Use a polite bow on top of that. Polite bow, I guess like Lilia's bow. It's not really that polite. It's more like low-key destructive. <laughs> um, right, what are we going to go for here? I think we nuke uh, this one down. Let's nuke this one down. Let's just chuck in like Cruel Sun as well. We should be good, boys. How's my screen so wide on PC? If you download Blue Stacks and play on it, uh, then you have an option to make it full screen in Blue Stacks itself. It's in the settings. So yeah, there are a few guides on how to do that on YouTube. But it's, it's my favorite way to play um, uh, Seven Deadly Sins is full screen on PC. I do also, I don't know, I go back and forth. I'll play it on like PC for a few hours and then I'll kind of appreciate having it on my hand in my sofa <laughs> while I'm just chilling downstairs. But yeah, it's, it's, it's nice for videos and recording just to play on PC because obviously um, then you don't have the, the dead parts of the screen. Uh, do I think free to play should summon on the King of Fighters collab? Yes, if it does come next week, I'll be summoning on it. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'm gonna wait for the official announcement, uh, just to kind of detail my plans. But as, uh, you know, if you've been following the free to play, you'll know that we've skipped like almost every single banner in the last, uh, two and a half months now to save up for Goddess Liz. But if King of Fighters arrives, you, um, if it's the same as it was on JP, you actually get, uh, five free multis for the event. So that's uh, 150 gems worth of, um, uh, free summons, which is actually really generous. So it means if you, uh, also, uh, what is it? You can also spend 450 gems to get to, uh, like, the guaranteed selector as well. So I think I'll probably be doing, like... You know, getting all the, the free summons on my free-to-play um, and then going for 450 gems on top of that. But yeah, it's a good banner to summon on, man. A Mega Rugal is really, really good. Keo is really good. Uh, the other two are alright. They're not bad. But a Mega Rugal and uh, Keo are really, really nice. So yeah, a Mega, a Mega is going to be a really interesting addition to the global PvP meta if he does come. Because uh, he's a much more annoying version of Demon Meliodas to kill. <laughs> he's so annoying to kill, man. You have to get the lineup really perfect on him. Or else he just becomes, like, if you proc his passive ability, man, leave him alive for too long. Or oh, it could be a little bit troublesome there. Is there, there like, a second phase to this one? I think there is. Um, maybe it's, like, a second fight, though. But yeah, if the KOF banner comes, I'll, I'll summon on my free-to-play on that one, definitely. Because they are like top meta units. Omega, like Pierce, uh, I was climbing Elite PvP the um, other day on G JP. And you run into a lot of Pierce teams with Omega and uh, Demon Meliodas. Because they're a really good combo, man. There's so much damage and uh, a lot of survivability. So yeah. Uh, actually, I really do hope the King of Fighters collab drops next, because I think the characters would be, uh, yeah, very spicy to get. I like the collab overall, man. There's a lot of good rewards. Yo, what's up, Axel? Thank you very much for the $10 super chat. Love your videos. Any tips for PvP for you? Um, <laughs> Rush Lost Fame, Meliodas is all. Uh, <laughs> uh, it depends on, like, what specifically you're after, you know? Are you after, like, team compositions? Is there a certain team that, um... Uh, you know, you want counters to, 
Like at the moment, it's either like Lost Vein Meliodas Salt Rush, you've got Blue Dean Meliodas Pierce teams with Red Escanor and Lilia, or you've got like Zeldris Commandment teams like Estorosa, Derriere, or possibly like the Three Brothers team that we showcased yesterday as well. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways to go. Uh, I think for this one, so we need to bring in Hauser, Deanne, and Gil Thunder. So that's Chuck Hauser on the front line. Um, also Gil Thunder as well. Uh, put Deanne on the sub. So Green Gil Thunder is a good character to have at level uh, 80 for the story. Oh, actually, I haven't even got him at level 80, man. I've only got him level 60. Should be enough, though. I reckon we'll be all right. You got him. Is he only four star as well? I think. Deanne on the sub. Okay, I'm just gonna give him my um. Whose set shall I give? So on this fight, what I want to do is uh, <laughs> the ambitious strategy of just rushing Eskinol's ult. <laughs> That's what we're going for here, lads. Like if you got a good thing and it's working, man, you just uh, you don't want to change it. All right, let's just chuck Gila on the sub there. And go in. I think we move Eskinor over to the left hand side. He should have been left hand side before, actually. That was a bit of a mistake. But yeah, Axel, let me know. I'll keep a, a close eye out for you in chat. But it's just all about understanding, you know, what's um, what are the commonly run teams at the moment and what teams do well to counter those. And we got a lot of global setups that work quite well on the channel. Can I get Lilia on the free-to-play account? It was when the uh, the Lilia banner arrived. I think it was like a month into the free-to-play account. So yeah, it was back then because I've been running this free-to-play account for almost six months now. So it has been quite some time. Okay, I think we'll go for this buff here. Because we can't get alt turn one. So I just need to draw like one more Escanor card here. And then we can win next turn. Oh, dude. <laughs> Escanor is cleaning up. Oh, that's perfect. That's great news. We might be able to KO next turn. I don't think Hauser's got that great of a gear set on because I usually just use him as a sub association character. But, you know, might might be able to do enough work with this card. For like 30. Actually, I think Escanor's just going to win the fight here. <laughs> oh, Escanor with a carry, boys. We love it. So yeah, as a as free to play, uh, you'll you'll want to be spending 450 gems on the King of Fighters collab to get the full 600 uh, banner rotation. When uh, the news and everything is announced for it, I'll do a bit of a breakdown on how I'm going to approach the event as free to play because it's going to be like a diff a bit different uh, from um, uh, what is it the JP collab. Because on the JP collab, there are actually quite a few Super Awakening coins, whereas those aren't going to be on Global, I would assume, unless they're bringing Super Awakening along with the collab, which I don't think they will. So yeah, I'm interested to see how they handle it. I don't think we're going to be getting Super Awakening for another month and a bit. But yeah, they shoot like the rewards for it overall were really, really decent, and it also brings us uh, then Final Boss Omega. So that'd be sick. Oh, we can borrow somebody's Lost Vein if we want here. Okay, I think we um, just go back to Pierce setup now. Uh, let's get Lilia there. Let's also chuck. We want Merlin on the sub. We don't need to uh, bring anybody else in. Oh, okay. Uh, who did I want? Hauser? Yeah, Hauser's got a sack set, so let's chuck him on the association there. Just need to move my Pierce set back to Meliodas here. A little bit, a little bit of juggling, a little bit of management throughout the uh, the story progression. Yo, Axel, what's a decent team for PvP? I love using Meliodas, Lost Vein, and Estorosa. If you get um, uh, what is it, Red Zeldris? Um, we got the three brothers team that we did a video on yesterday. That team's really, really good. It's a great all around. It could deal with pretty much like every single top meta team at the moment. Does depend uh, to a certain extent a bit on your RNG, the opponent's RNG. And that's pretty much every single PvP team. But yeah, in 30 days time, dude, make sure you have 10 plat coins, because then you can pick up um uh what is it? Red Zeldris from the coin shop. Oh actually I should have just moved around the cards on Escanor. I would be fine either way, I think. One shot? <laughs> okay, me yeah, we, yeah, we, we're chilling, man. We're chilling. <sighs> okay. This is why I highly recommend, if you're a, a 
progressing player. <laughs> Escanor is the first you are set. He just carries everything, man. He'll get you uh, so far in story. I think Escanor does carry... Um, I think it's about 90 to 95% of difficult story fights. Like, Derriere is kind of the same, though. Derriere or um, Escanor, both of those characters are nuts for story, man. So good. Okay, we need Bon on the sub here, so no... Um, uh, no, what is it? Merlin for additional art gauge at the start. Uh, KOF is King of Fighters. It's uh, one of the collaborations that we recently had on the Japanese version. Is a tank team still viable on PvP? Uh, it depends on what you mean by like a tank team. Like a, if, if you're on about like a Valenti team, <laughs> I would definitely say no. Um, but... There are certain like commandment teams that are quite tanky with like Esterosa because of all the stat increases um, and Zeldris's uh, commandment as well. So yeah, it depends exactly what you mean by a tank team. But there's also like Lost Vein Melio uh, Meliod Assault Rush with like Green Deanne as well and maybe Fraudrin uh, or Merlin on the front lines as well. Those ones can be um, quite annoying. Okay, actually I think here, let's just go for... Uh, this should be enough to get this wave down. Save Eskinal's ulti for the next one. I don't know if there's like a bigger rock man that comes out. But if there is, then we've got the ult ready for it. Let's have a look. Okay, we got two here. Okay, that works out perfectly. Oh yeah, that's really good. <laughs> okay, so we can just ult this one and then go for this. Perfect, mate. Perfect. Oh, thank you very much, APR. I certainly appreciate it, man. I'm free to play and I'm at episode 179. I don't want to go further because it's the worst thing. What's episode 179? Um, I'm just trying to trying to think on that one. Is that is that the Rune and Frazeria one? Or Freesha one? We're, we're going to get all the fun stuff on the free to play soon. So I'm going to get the, the true free to play experience of getting through this. Bro, every time you face Mono Red, they get insta L3 Arthur buff. <laughs> yeah, man. Mono Red, Mono Red has like, uh, what is it? It's like a 40-something percent chance to start with like a crazy hand. Because they either like have a silver Eskinor single target card instantly merged. Actually, is it 40? It's even higher than that. I think it actually might be even higher than that. I think it's 50-something percent. Because, yeah, if you drew, draw two copies of, like, Rank Up um, or Arthur Buff or Single Target Nuke Card. So, yeah, it's like a 50% chance that Mono Red has, like, just an incredibly strong start. So there's Eskinor's on the left-hand side there. Would I say health and crit damage is best set for Red Zeldris? It really depends on the meta. Um, when you need him to be a bit more tanky for, like, full commandment teams... And when, like, King comes onto the scene, there are certain matchups where I found health you are is better. Uh, but they're also, if you've got somebody tanking, like, Esterosa, then maybe damage is better to go for. So, yeah, it's a little bit tough to say overall, because uh, I think they both have their pros and cons. Um, okay, here, I think we'll chuck a lane on the sub, actually. And then we'll go for, instead of Lilia, I think I'll just chuck in, like, this Liz here. Go for Liz Hawk, and then I'll just uh I won't worry about switching over gear, man. I think it's just like a fight or two. Have you tried for that Ruin and uh Freesia part just using like green Eskinor to nuke stuff? I can't remember hundred percent if it worked on my main account. Or what I exactly used for it. But we'll probably be there in about um uh, what is it? 40, 40 minutes to an hour, I would assume. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how we get on. I think we'll get uh, this play here. Do I know when Super Awakening is coming to global? I would estimate one to two months. Judging by the current play pace. It came out at the same time as, uh, what is it, Droll. Uh, and also the Tower of Challenge. Which was a little bit after Goddess Liz. So I'd assume it's going to be around Christmas, the new year. 
if I were to make a bet on that one. But yeah, I'll give I'll give that stage a try today and see if we can get through it on the free to play. But I know a lot of people get stuck there. A lot of people get stuck at the start of chapter twelve as well. <laughs> they can both be uh, a little bit problematic. Right, perfect. Mono Red is still really strong and ungeared PvP. Love you. What's up, Austin? Hopefully you're doing well today, mate. And yeah, it is, man. It's still really, really good. Mono Red starts to fall off a bit uh, when Goddess Liz comes out. Uh, because of her really strong shield and cheat death mechanic and stuns as well. Uh, she's just a bit of a bad time for Mono Red because it makes it a lot harder with her to kill Lost Vein. But then um, I think Mono Red does make a um, a nice little comeback once like King and Eastern and all the debuff units become very popular. Because then if you can instantly rush into gold, then you just like completely kill their game plan. <laughs> and yeah, it's just uh, very, very fun. You can you can still win versus Mono Red with, uh, what is it, King and Hendrix Center. It's difficult though, and you need to get some pretty good RNG and get King's all off very, very fast. But like, yeah, Mono Red does, does well uh, when there's no Goddess Liz around. Or when there are a lot more debuff teams, and they, those do become very popular moving forward. Use Blue Giant Deanne can counter Mono Red. <laughs> Blue Giant Deanne, she's not too bad in the right scenario. I have, I've been meaning to do a revisit video at some point on her. I want to do a video on her. I think when Goddess Liz comes out, because she can get through the shield. Actually, I don't even need to move a card here. We can just go straight into uh, these three. But yeah, Giant Deanne's fun. She's a uh, she's a classic character, you know. Everybody's got a. She's not the not the best, but not the worst. And that ultimate still is very very hard. It's still one of the hardest hitting ults in the entire game. She's gonna have uh, a lot more uses as well in the next um, few months because she's really good for the season three guild boss if they ever add that in. Um, and she's also really good for uh, Final Boss uh, Twiggo when he comes out, and that'll probably be about around the same time as Goddess Liz, because that one's a cleave fight. You got to fight um, uh, what is it, Twiggo, uh, Waylu, <laughs> and also uh, Taizu as well. So yeah, just cleaving and rushing ults on that fight is uh, yeah, just crazy for points on that one. How did you get Divine Axe Rita? It was, uh, it's come back once, but it was initially debuted with the release of Escanor, and then it was available, I think, for gold coins for a while, I think with the release of Red Escanor. So yeah, when Green Escanor released, like, everybody got Divine Axe Rita. Super easy to get. You got, like, a bit of sun charge playing every day, and you use that to charge up the axe, and then you got it for free. So yeah, I started this account with the release of uh, Green Escanor, so that was like the first weapon I got. But should I try Paul Lilia for free to play? Nah, definitely not on that banner, at least in my opinion, just because it's still a um it's still a 0.25% rate, so it's very, very low. Like the average odds, that's like one in four hundred. Of getting Lelia. So, like, think about how deep you need to go into that banner. It's like just over average of three rotations. So, it's around like 700 uh, to 900 gems, I think, on a step up banner. Uh, but if it was like a regular banner for 0 0.25, that'd be average like one in a thousand and a bit. In terms of the actual gems, so yeah, I wouldn't pull on that banner as free to play. There are there are better OC banners in the future where Lilia does come back as a 0.5% rate. So yeah, I'd I'd, I'd wait till those because the current one it just really isn't that spicy. But I can understand like why you definitely um, like want Lilia. She's a fantastic character, but also if you save up for Goddess Liz or some of the um, the KOF characters, then you don't necessarily um, uh, need Lilia for a while. But yeah, she's great to get. I think on the, um, I don't know if it was the Eastern banner or what was, what was the banner after that? I think it's like the Evil Lily or a Mono banner. She was 0 0.5. So yeah, there are going to be some banners in the next like uh, 
uh, two to three months, maybe a bit more than that, where she's going to be available. Hopefully, she's on the Goddess Liz banner as well. I think they did put her back for the... Um, I, th I think she was on the Goddess Liz banner on JP. I may be incorrect, though. But yeah, I think that was like a community voted banner, and they added Lilia on that, because she's like top meta. But I don't know how they're going <clears> to... <throat> Uh, handle that banner when it does come to the global version. But the Goddess Lose banner was fire, man. It was like the best banner in game by far. So I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be really, really good when it comes to the global. Because I've been sa I've been saving all my gems on the free-to-play <laughs> for a very, very long time. And I, I need a good banner because the Lost Fate Meliodas banner... It had Lost Fate Meliodas, but and it had some other good units. It wasn't like complete trash, but there was uh, a lot of uh, slightly less desired units in there. Sucks that it's pay to win to get the KOF costumes. The costumes are a lot more available, I think, via playing in comparison to the AOT event. Because AOT event barely gave you like any costumes via playing. And I think there were kind of few via the arcade mode and various stuff. Uh, I may be wrong, though. But yeah, the collab stuff needs to be available for gems. Especially if it's limited time, you know? But Omega, is, he's, he's really good even without full costumes. I think when I did my showcase, I barely had any costumes for him, I think. I know Keo, I, I rushed to do that immediately, so I had, like, no costumes for him. But uh, I, I don't know how Keo would fare in the, the global PvP meta at the moment. I feel like Omega would definitely be the, the more exciting of the two. Because, like, what is it? This king's far too common in global PvP at the moment. Uh, plus as well. Actually, I'm thinking about this play. We rush ults next turn. I think that's probably the way to win. So let's move this around and let's go for this. Because then we'll uh, Dean Melly ult into this one next turn. Escanor ult Droll and we should be good. But yeah, Kyo, you need the Ignites to stick for him to get really big damage. And that becomes a lot easier in the future because there are a lot of uh, characters that prevent cleansing debuffs. Yeah, King's uh, a, bit, a bit too common at the moment, I would say. Zeldris as well is knocking about a fair bit. Ooh, perfect, mate. Trying to get Zeldris. He's your favorite character in 13 days. The red one is going to be in the uh, the plat coin shop. The much better of the two, at least in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah. Save up 10 platinum coins. Use five of your copies of SSR Halloween Giller. Uh, Gila, <laughs> and then you can, you know, uh, get Zeldris. I miss Green King Alt Rush teams. Oh, those are the days. The problem is they just bombard the game with really, really good uh, red units. I would say out of all the classes, red is probably the um, uh, the most stacked of them all. Like there are so many ridiculous red characters. Got like Derriere, Lost Fame Meliodas, Keo, Escanor, Gotha, Arthur. There's all sorts of mad stuff in the red class. So to be a green character in this game, it's tough to be a green character in this game, man. You'll be really, really good as a green character to be, uh, you know, competitive and interesting. Yo, what's up, my boy Steve Wester? Hopefully you're doing well today, man. Nice to see you knocking about. I got Roxy on my first pull. Is she good? Um, not really. <laughs> She's all right. But there are much better characters than Roxy. Hashtag Blue Zell dress is very underrated. I don't think so. I'm I'm very much uh, not the biggest fan of Blue Zell dress. I think he's remarkably inconsistent. I think to build a team around him, you sacrifice so much control and utility. Um... So yeah, I've just I haven't had a good experience playing Blue Zeldris over like a period of uh, half an hour. I might have like one or two really good matches uh, where he's just like oh massive crit, but then I also have matches where um, either I've built a team around you know making him crit, so like Slater on the front, Death Pierce on the back, and like Lost Fame Meliodas as well for additional damage. But then I'm fighting somebody that's rushing alts uh, that starts with like three alt gauge. <laughs> um, or like I, because I'm running Slater and Death Pierce, my CC is so low that, you know, I go second and I'm just absolutely clomped by it before like I can do anything that impactful. So yeah, I don't know. I've never, 
I just haven't... I really want him to work, but I just haven't had a good experience with... Uh, uh, what is it, Zelda, so far? I'm thinking, what are we going for here? How much does this droll have? Okay, I think I'm going to merge this on Meliodas, fire this off, um, and see if we can nuke down the droll here. Oh, no! Dude, that was really close. <laughs> right. Gerhade's going for the heal. We should be good. If we use a Pierce card here. And then I think that should get him down. We go for Melizol and then finish up with this. Should be good. Am I skipping KOF? Nah, I'll be summoning on KOF if it if it does uh drop and is confirmed. Which usually the data mine stuff is uh quite accurate. But yeah, even on the free-to-play, I'll be doing 450 gems, because you can get uh, five free multis if it's the same as JP. So yeah, it's definitely definitely like a non-skip, uh, at least in my opinion. Plus, they're, they're all exclusive as well, so it puts that additional pressure on. But that will break my uh, almost three-month summoning drought on the free-to-play if that collab does uh, drop. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how they layer up. Hopefully they give even more free multis on Global Man. That'd be really, really good. Kind of kind of doubt it. But, you know, they may do. We can always uh, be a little bit hopeful, I'd say. Alright, let's go for it. What unit should I build around my Red Derriere? Uh, if you want to do PvP. Uh, she's kind of a character. She fits into a lot of teams, but my favorite team to run Red Area in PvP is Red Zeldris and Esterosa. Because then you can um, just use Esther's Taunt to take a lot of pressure off Dairy, you know, ramp her up to some massive damage uh, quite quickly, and then just uh, have quite a bit of fun. Uh, yeah, I think we just go for this play. I think Eskinor's ult next turn should finish this droll off. You've been playing a month and you got four, four, four gems, so I'm going to summon on KOF. Fair play, dude. Fair play. It's one of those things that Goddess says is probably not going to be too far after KOF, because there's not that many units now that they're missing on uh, Global. You know, we're really catching up to the Japanese version at a pretty ridiculous rate. Is uh, It's quite crazy. But yeah, my, I don't know, it's going to be a tough one. Because Goddess Liz is like, is nuts. Is really, really crazy. She's so dominant for control and kind of works on like any team. Because <laughs> she just slows down PvP so much. And her cheat death mechanic is just ridiculously broken, man. Plus she's really good for a lot of PvE stuff as well. So she's a banner that, you know, you kind of want to make sure you got the the gems for her. But also, the KOF units, man, are really spicy as well. Kyo is really good, and Mega Rugal is really good. I need to uh, test out mine Athena a bit more if they do come to Global. Yo, what's up, Alexander? Hopefully you're doing well today, man. Red Dairy Ariel Rush is fun. I... What is it? I find... Uh, if I just want to play an alt rush team, uh, <laughs> it'd just be go going for like Lossé Meliodas instead of Derriere. But Derriere, I don't know, she does have the, the pro of having evasion. Evasion's quite nice, because then um, you can't be drained while you're evading. But the comparative advantage of Lost Vein is that if you press Lost Vein Meliodas' ult, everybody dies. Actually, I think the way to do this is probably... We go for this because then we get two alts next turn. Well, hey, sorted, mate. Blue Zeldris, Blue Dean Meliodas, Lilia, and Blue Jericho on the back. Hashtag winning squad, bro. You know, I haven't tried uh, Zeldris with um, uh, Blue Jericho, so that's not a bad recommendation. I did see Shogun saying that he was enjoying playing uh, Pierce with uh, Zeldris there. So, yeah, I'm, I might give it a go, man. It doesn't sound like a bad recommendation. But, um, yeah, I, I'm still not too sure if there, there'd there be, like, enough alt control with that. Because I'm just thinking if, like, uh, what is it? 
What's the standard play? Okay, I'm a I'm a 20 IQ simp, lost fame Meliod Assault Rush player. So I go into a match. <laughs> I upgrade my king. I petrify the Lilia. Oh, I guess you could break out of the petrify with Zeldris's commandment. Hmm. And then drain. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess if yeah, well, could work. Yeah, I might, might, might have to try that team actually. Because I was thinking there's, you know, no additional drain if um, Lilia gets petrified. But I guess for the commandment, you can break out of petrify and then drain. Mm, yeah, uh, that's a fun recommendation, Steve. Certainly appreciate it, dude. I'll give it a go at some point because I think I've got Jericho leveled up. I never did a video on her, but I have got her leveled. Go for the meaning of friendship here. We need Jericho in the team. Just chuck this one in. I've actually survived more Lost Vein melee ults than I was expecting to. I know that'll change after the next two festival banners. It's very true, man. Very true. A lot of people have Lost Vein, you know, uh, one six, uh, maybe three six, four six at the moment. And it's the big blubbery boys that have six six Lost Vein, or very lucky players. But yeah, there are quite a few low sig, um, uh, what is it, lost veins out there. But those high ones are just terrifying, man. You see, like, anything over a 4-6, it's like, you know, even if they have, like, no cards in hand, your entire team's wiped. It's mental, mate. His ult's way too powerful. Will 2,000 gems be enough for Goddess Liz? <laughs> I think you already know the answer to that, Steve. I think you, uh, you're you already perfectly aware that it only takes 900 to guarantee the character. So I think that's going to be a bit a bit overkill. I think uh, you should hopefully get a, a good 4 out of 6 there. What teams could you use Red Zeldris on that isn't Commandment? Um, you can really like fit him into any team because he's quite a high utility character. Like, he slows down alt rush teams with his um, commandment, can break any out of your characters out of uh, control. So yeah, there's just a lot of different teams that you can uh, slot him on. It's also got some pretty good damage, drain, nice ult that, you know, if you've got a few levels in, will consistently one-shot if it crits. So yeah, there's, uh, there's some good perks. How are my free-to-play units so powerful? I'm free-to-play, and the only powerful unit I have is Green Merlin and Green Counter Meliodas. He come powerful. Those those two units are quite powerful, but the main thing you want is uh, a green version of Escanor. It's uh, the, one of the best units for story. Uh, green Dairy Area is the, arguably the best unit for story. But there are also some stages where... Um, you can't use her or has a requirement to like use Escanor due to story purposes. <laughs> so yeah, you just want to green, green Escanor, but uh, how is how is Escanor available? Oh, did he just delete my ult? It's a bit rude, mate. Well, that's a little bit unfortunate. But it's all good. I think we gave a double pierce card here. Slam him with that. But yeah, it's just a matter of playing and summoning on banners, dude. My free-to-play account, I've had a game for, um, uh, what is it, almost six months now. So we've summoned on quite a few banners throughout the process. But also, uh, via time and collecting additional uh, SSR... Oh, pardon me. My goodness. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that one, boys. Yeah, collecting additional like uh, SSR coins, you can get um, uh, characters like the red version of Escanor uh, on discount in the Platinum Coin Shop. So, like, for example, in this Halloween event, you can get, um, like, a 6-6 Gila. But you can just get a 1-6 Skeela and use five of those coins to then buy the red version of Escanor. So that's like five out of seven of the coins you need. And then maybe like two unwanted characters that you get in excess from certain banners. But yeah. You know, it just all comes with time and play, dude. But Counter Meliodas and Merlin, they, uh, they're good characters. They do a lot of work. But they're not quite as... Uh, immediate and impactful as characters like Escanor and Derriere when it does come to the story. This boss gave you some problems. Yeah, that Gotha can be a, a little bit annoying. But if you just go for a high damage ult, he's pretty easy to get through. Just like deleting cards is uh, a bit of a pain. <laughs> he would have been dead on the, the second turn if we uh, could have fired off Escanor's ult there. I think we've got to fight him like um, uh, two more times though. 
and also again i i do heavily advise if um you know you are a newer progressing player once you start in training cave sort out you are give uh, Eskinor or derriere whichever one you have because they can have a lot of uses uh, for you throughout the story in the game should we just go like all the Eskinor cards there <laughs> i think so does this one delete odds as well he's got a lot more health this one I don't know if you've got enough alt levels to get him down. Got a bit of Jericho follow up. Jericho as well. It's a pretty good uh, unit for story. She's got a lot of single target damage. The problem with Jericho though, she's a bit more flimsy. So when it comes to high damage scenarios, if she gets focused and targeted, um, then yeah, she can die quite easily. But if you can quickly get to an alt on her, using Merlin on the sub, um, or front lines and apple pie food, and the ultimate crits, then that's, you know, most of the bosses in the game one shot. Oh, thank you very much, GN. Certainly appreciate it. Should I get green coin shot barn or wait for Zeldris uh, as a free-to-play person? Definitely wait for Zeldris. <laughs> like, green barn um, is, is fun for certain stuff. I think he's better for, like, 4v4 PvP in the future and Guild Wars. Because uh, the more characters there are in play, the more he can extort their power. Um, but, like, right now, man, like, there's so many red units that just dominate regular PvP. So, yeah, definitely wait for Zeldris. He's much better overall in comparison to green barn. So that's why I'd be doing. I don't have Green Barn on my uh, free to play. Don't plan on getting him um, anytime soon. The final go to the boss is very in irritating and incredibly annoying. I think we're about to fight that that fella right now. I forgot what the final one does. But we've um, we rolled through everything so far. The final one blue. I think it was um, yeah, he is blue. Cool, cool. Has he got rank ups? Okay, yeah, he's going to rank up. Oh, he's got attack disable as well. Moves one debuff and also steals one alt gauge when attacking. Okay, that could be annoying then. Um, right, let's go fire, fire. I think we still just brute forced him with damage here. Because, yeah, does he cycle ults quite quickly? I, I might have needed to, like, move Merlin onto the front to drain him. Because I think he's just going to finger guns and then steal my ult. And then ult himself. So, yeah, he steals ult from everybody. Oh, that is annoying. And also attack disable on top of that as well. Yeah, I can see why <laughs> this guy could be a pain. But I think one way to maybe approach this fight is have like um merlin uh king escanor because then you can get rid of the attack disable you can drain you can chuck in an escanor card i think maybe i don't know if like slater works as well if you can like debuff uh disable not take finger guns certain turns i guess he removes one debuff so yeah we we might be in a little bit of trouble here is he another ult Okay, now we're good. You are gear Escanor for the carry boys. <laughs> or just use, uh, yeah. Escanor Jericho. <laughs> like, I didn't put any gear on my Jericho, man. She's completely, uh, I think she's completely naked. Not in that, not in that sense, boys. But, you know, you know what I'm on about. Far too many, James. We all know. Yeah, he's available on the human ticket draw. I don't think he's been on a banner for a bit. I think he's back on the, the Goddess Liz banner. And a few uh, big festival banners in the I think he's been on every single festival banner. There was an offer, I think, um... Was it about a month ago? Where you could get Green Escanor as part of the Hawk Pass. Uh, for $8. So yeah, I made a video. I was like, if you don't have Escanor, you gotta you gotta buy Escanor. It's the best, the best deal, man. Escanor for $8. A banging deal. Right, let's go for uh, the next pie. The gems are going to go up quite nicely after all the story stuff on the free-to-play as well. They've been ticking up um, quite well here. I don't think we've got anything to claim just yet, but let's uh, fight this troll. Then we got Glocks to fight. But yeah, Jericho didn't have any gear for the purpose of that fight as well. Because I'm too lazy, boys. I was too lazy to put any gear on her. 
It's a secret to a free-to-play account. It's just uh, playing consistently, man. Making sure you're just doing like the important stuff you need to do every day. Um, we did a video on what I do every day on my free-to-play account. I'm just I'm a very lazy grinder on my free-to-play, but it's also stuff like making sure you stay on top of training cave as well. Training cave is very important if you want. Um, uh, you know, anvils, hammers, uh, you are stones to engrave your gear as well. And one of my biggest priorities when I started the free-to-play account was getting to a stage um, where I could consistently clear training cave every single week. Because that's how you get, like, the big stats in this game, you know? Actually, I think we'll go for this play. We can probably get Droll down next turn. I'm not too sure if the resistance is going to be high enough here. Oh no, it is it's fine. He's definitely going down. <laughs> yeah, plenty of overkill there, boys. Goddess Liz or KOF uh, for my free-to-play account. It's it's gonna be both. I should have the gems for both. Because it's only 450 um if there are five free multis for the KOF uh, 600 gems summons. And then Goddess Liz. Goddess Liz might have a couple of free uh, multis on that banner as well. I hope anyway. They did uh, a couple via Lost Vein. So yeah, fingers crossed. Oh, pardon me. But if if I didn't have um let's say if I was in a position where I had like 300 gems at the moment and if I summoned on the KOF, I probably couldn't summon on Goddess Liz, I would probably skip KOF and hope that I got lucky in the five free multis or just like stop summoning when I got um a single copy of a mega. Because KF units are really good, but Goddess Liz is Goddess Liz. And I think at some point, because Netmarble do love money, and they do love milking everybody, everything will be back. But it's definitely going to be a, a tough decision to make for a lot of players. But yeah, hopefully the collab comes with a lot of gems as well. You know, doing the story, there's a good little stack of gems there. Um, on top of the, the free ticket summons as well, so hopefully there's some good stuff. But yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Should I summon for Lilia? No, definitely not. She's on a 0.25% rate. That's uh, 1 in 400. So it's going to take you on average 3 and a bit rotations. So about like, uh, what is it? 700 to 900 gems to get one copy. And that's on average. So again, she's so low that I, I wouldn't do it. It's just a bit of a way too much of a gamble on a very underwhelming banner. So definitely save. I, c I can understand the temptation to uh, want to go for Lulia, but that 0.25% boosted rate is just terrible. It's still very, very low. So it's just not worth it, in my opinion. Right, I think we nuke into uh, Glocks here, and then we'll, we'll ult draw on that next turn. Oh man, Glocks has got health, boys. Damn, yeah, he's got a lot of hit points. Okay. But we should probably, like, take Jericho out and put Lilia back in. <laughs> I just realized Jericho's been doing, like, nothing uh, for the last um, few fights. So, yeah, she really hasn't been doing too much. Um, might be in a little bit of trouble here. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. It's starting to get a lot more beefy, though, in terms of uh, the pushback here. I'm definitely feeling like a bit more. Oh, we got loads of Jericho cards, man, but we got no source on Jericho. I think we probably rush uh, Dean Melly's ult here. Oh, it's Glox's commandment in play, given that attack reduction there. Oh, dude, we actually might be dead here, man. I think I gotta go for this. I think this is my only chance at winning. But considering Jericho has no gear, I think I might be about to get clapped by this. If I'd Lily, it would have been a uh, KO though. I think I just got a bit too confident. Oh, that's Dean Melly. He's in the bin. <laughs> oh no, es Escanor is still alive. So this is, uh, you know, slightly optimistic news. Um, 
granted, like, looking at the situation here, man, my optimism is uh, somewhat limited. Hmm. I think the only way we can win this is if Eskinor survives and we get off his uh, ult next turn. Come on, Eskinor, please. Glox was hitting like uh, so soft last turn. Oh my god, please. No, no, no. Actually, Merlin. Oh no, we're going to attack the Sable here. This is terrible news. I think I'm dead. Um, okay, if we can, like, one-shot that Glox next turn. I, I forgot if my Merlin has gear. I was like, everything's so easy, man. I just need my Escanor. I know, I've, I'm being smacked down to reality here now. Oh. Yeah, I think even if I do kill that Droll... Oh, actually, no, we have been given the, another turn here. If we kill that Droll, we can maybe win. Oh, I guess we're going to get bled out, so... Yeah, okay, we, we, we dead boys. I should have forfeited that a couple of turns earlier. I had a small amount of optimism, though. Okay, Glocks and Droll. Let's take out Jericho. Let's chuck in uh, Lilia. Get that big old damage booster. Let's also, on the sub, put in Arthur. And then for Merlin, I'll just chuck a set on Merlin just in case she uh, does come into the fray. Cool, cool. I think we're ready to go. This time, boys, we got it, man. How many gems am I out on the free to play? Uh, almost 1,200. We should be uh, by the end of this one been like three months of saving and not summoning though. Actually, I think this time I'm going to just concentrate on Droll at the start because I'm going to be forced to nuke him anyway. Because he's going to uh, throw up his taunt. Because this is actually, even though he's green, the blue version of Droll, which is the tank one. It's that very uh, annoying card. <laughs> We taunts up and also increases his health related stats. But now we got Lilia, we've got access to heals, so we can stay alive. And also Alt Drain as well. Go on, Lilia. We'd love to see it. Um I'm just gonna move this for now. Oh, I think Droll goes down. So yeah, if, if you get to that stage, um <laughs> nuke Droll at the start. Just being dumb, man. Right, I think if we just go for this play, it should be good. I don't know if he removes debuffs. He doesn't remove debuffs. That golden corrosion is going to be mental. Right, we can still use Melly's ult here though, so we should be pretty good. Unless he gets clapped. Okay, we're fine. So I think let's go for... Yeah, Corrosion did massive damage, so if we just fire off the Sun on Eskinor, go for this, heal up. Should be good. I'm getting a bit, a bit worried though, boys, that I might be in for a bit of a rough time when it comes to Chapter 11. Hmm. <coughs> Hoping it'll be two weeks. I think uh, the only Halloween thing that's coming out is um, one more on JP. They're selling like more costumes. But our Halloween event on Global is actually scheduled to end, I think, next Tuesday, the 27th. If you have a look at some of the uh, event timers in game, then yeah, it dissipates then. So I think they're going to start something um, on the 27th. But it also feels weird if they end the Halloween event before Halloween, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Bay. If it's for the KOF collab, you know, I, I will not mind. 
Am I going to 6 6 Halloween Gila on my free to play account? Nah. I'm 6 6 6 sing on the main account, but on the free to play, dude, that's five coins. Coins are so hard to get on the free to play. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely using those coins for like Zeldris, man. I'm going to be a bit patient on the free to play. I'm going to wait till he goes on discount, though. Just because I really don't have um, enough coins to get him uh, immediately, anyway. And it should only be like, I think, three to four weeks before he goes on discount. So, you know, time, time ends up flying in this game. <laughs> and I don't have a super stacked uh, UR commandment team built on the free-to-play anyway, so I don't immediately need him. But it would be nice to get him straight away. But I don't blame anybody that immediately wants to go in for Red Zeldris, man. He is uh, very, very spicy. My uh, One of my favorite characters overall. I think the Zelda Stroll team will be good in the King meta on Global. Um, like the King of Fires meta or the King meta? Because the, the Festival King meta works quite well. Um, just due to the fact, if you have like a high damage output character to retaliate with after a couple of turns, then yeah, it can work out really, really nicely. I like uh, running on the Japanese version, the um, Red Zelda Stroll and Lost Vein team. Because what you can do is just move around cards to get rid of the debuffs. And if the debuffs, like, aren't applied, then King can't really deal much damage and also loses control as well. So if your opponent runs out of uh, debuff cards, then yeah, it can be really, really good. Because then it just takes away the power control as well. So you can play around like uh, Festival King. It's a little bit, a little bit tricky to do sometimes. But um, uh, yeah, when it works, it works really, really well. And sometimes there is just crazy RNG. Like, everything becomes very chaotic uh, once Festival King comes in. <laughs> he's, a, he's still a crazy character, man. And there's some ridiculous draw those teams can uh, access. Also, equally, um, it's quite fun if you do have, like, Zelda Stroll and Lost Vein, because then you can just move around the cards on Lost Vein to get rid of that stuff. And meanwhile, it forces uh, Hendrickson and also um, uh, King to just keep on attacking in to apply debuffs. Which then, you know, King, like, he almost always crits Lost Vein. And Hendrickson, some of the time, I would say, like, one out of three, one out of four crits Lost Vein. So, yeah, it becomes, like, quite easy to get the gold cards on Lost Vein. <laughs> and then once you do, if you've got a good attack set, man, you can just retaliate and uh, tear apart that team. But then Goddess Liz, if they're running Goddess Liz, makes it a bit harder to clamp back. But there's 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 some good uh, good play that goes on between those two. I thoroughly enjoy it. I don't know why I just didn't use Eskinor's ult there. Yeah, I should have just instantly gone for that. I don't know if I was like waiting for another wave or something in my head. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just a bit of a simp. Why don't I do Tower of Challenge and JP server? Yeah, I should have done a stream on that a while ago. I like to play Global. Global's definitely like my main server in comparison to JP. Like, I like looking at all the new characters on JP, but my um, biggest commitment really is to Global. So yeah, sometimes I'm a bit slack on the JP grind. Because again, I don't really care about it as much um, as Global. I think when Global... If there is a point where like Global and JP are exactly the same game and they like fully catch up then i'll probably stop playing jp but i don't know i don't feel like that's going to come for a while another like half a year or so but i like i like you know doing all the content super early on jp and that's definitely one of the most uh, enjoyable parts but here we got dairy and monspy so i think we'll just oh we can't um uh what is that Dairy is this? Okay, this is the red one. Yeah, we definitely want to go for <laughs> this dairy then. Uh, do I want to use the pierce card separately? I think, I think we'll just use them together. Maximize draw here. Might be a bit of a mistake, but I think the biggest priority here is getting that dairy area down. So let's just chuck a massive dent into her. Oh, damn. What's the unique? And check that out. Is it like removes a debuff and heals for a certain amount of health? Or removes all debuffs? Let me have a let me have a look at that. 
Okay, so heals 50% of diminished health every time a debuff is removed from the hero. Okay, so it's the same note as that, like, um, uh, what is it, forearm thing in the training cave that spews poison? <laughs> so yeah, debuffs on Derry are a bad time. Um, but let's move this card around, get Lost Fame Melizol, and can we debuff uh, this lad? Lost Fame Melizol? D Melizol. Yeah, we'll just track this on as well. It's a little bit wasted. I should have done it first, but it's fine. Actually, we might get Monspy down there. If I'd done the correct order, it would have probably gotten down. Might have still been alive, though. Okay, so we debuff. Um, debuff. Go for the ult, and then track in the Pierce card. Right, perfect. So yeah, that Derriere debuffs are bad, unless you want her to heal for a lot. So just be careful applying any debuffs to her. But she only has like 177k, so most strong characters ults are just going to one-shot her anyway. Yeah, we're almost at the Frieza and Ruin part. I think we've got a few more fights against the Commandments to get through here. But we're not too far away. We're probably about 15, 20 minutes away. Four more months to global catches to JP. I think somebody did like the rough math on it on Reddit and figured out it was around like between March and May time that they should overlap at the current pace. Something something like that. But yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, do we just have Dreyfus here? Or Fraudron? <laughs> He's not called the Ten Commandments Dreyfus, man. He's called the Ten Commandments Fraudred. I'm, I'm pretty sure. But let's let's go for this fight, man. I complete all the chapters on the same day they arrived. Nice, man. Nice. It's always good to get ahead of it again. I've been slacking on my free-to-play. Terrible, lazy player. But today, that all changes. I think this one, we just uh, go for the alt, right? Yeah, there's nothing too special there. He is actually just uh, the standard version of Dreyfus, uh, Dreyfus, so he's not Fraudron or anything. This one is just Dreyfus, but technically, in terms of the story, he is Fraudron. <laughs> but it's just a regular green SR Dreyfus as the uh, actual opponent here. So he doesn't hit very hard. Should sort him out nicely, I think, with this play. Let's go for another Cruel Sun. Straight into an Escanor nuke, straight into a Pierce card. Yo, what is up, Folo Meister? Hopefully you're doing well today, man. Mad love to yourself in the Philippines. What chapter do I like out of the game? I'm a masochist. I actually love chapter 12. I had a lot of fun in chapter 12. But that was on my, my main whale account. We'll, we'll see how it is on the free-to-play. I thought there was, like, every fight in chapter 12 was, like, a little bit of a puzzle. But once you understand uh, how to mitigate or solve the problems of certain fights, then they become a lot more straightforward. So yeah, I think I, I'm excited for the free-to-play chapter 12 stream. I didn't want to commit to it in the um, uh, the title today because getting through, you know, 10, 11, it's going to be a bit of a uh, bit of a marathon. But we we're almost through 11, so I think uh, probably at some point tomorrow we'll do the chapter 12 free-to-play run through. Take on the Grey Demons, uh, all the Esterosas, the Knights, then we got like Derriere, Grey Road. There are a lot of quite big fights in Chapter 12, in all fairness. <laughs> what team do I recommend you d to defeat Blue Ma Malascular? You just, um, you want a Green Escanor. If you're, <laughs> you're stuck at that part, <laughs> Green Escanor, man, all the way. I think you need a version of Esk. I think you can get one on loan, regardless. Um, what's this one again? Zeldra. Zeldra can steal alt gauge, so we want to get him down. Um, and then we've also got a Glox on the side here. Glox is a bit of a pain. Glox, that wonderful JP exclusive unit that we all love. Um, can we also get Lilia's ult? Maybe we go for Lilia's ult here. Yeah, why not? Then we got like some nice cleaves and mitigation next turn because if there are any silver or gold cards as well, we can rank those down. 
but also might drain ults like El uh, Zeldris is going to steal ult gauge so that's a bit annoying if he just goes for melee that's fine that's great news melee again oh no he's going to do on everyone oh he just patienced anyway okay that's amazing news <laughs> um, right let's go for Lilia, Pierce card, and then I think we're just going to Escanor ult the, uh, the Glocks there. I'm hoping that Zeldris dies from this play. I think he should. Maybe Fraudrin or Dreyfus is on the ropes a little bit there. And then he's just going to pass the next turn now because Fraudrin has uh, no cards lined up. So it just immediately comes back to us. And then we can chuck off a couple of Cruel Suns. And we're good to go. Chapter 11 of the Freesia and Ruin Battle is just walking. <laughs> I, th I think so, yeah. You just, what, what are you doing after that in the story? Is it the bit with like Zaratros? I think it is, yeah. It's that weird bit with Zaratros, isn't it? Preluding to uh, Chapter 12, I think, anyway. But let's uh, go for the next fight. Some more commandment fights. We'll do one with Barn here. I think maybe we need to add him onto the team. Is this... Oh, is this the Malascular we fight? Was this Malascular an annoying fight? I think she was, actually. I'm pretty sure there's a big Malascular boss there. Let's have a bit of a look. See what she's got going on for her. Because the Malascular I was talking about a couple of minutes ago was just the... Chapter 9 one? Okay, so we can't use Meliodas here... So I'm going to chuck Merlin on the front. Uh, we'll just chuck a barn on the back there. And then... I think we're good to go. So what does she do again? Heals 20% diminished health at the start of every turn. Okay. And also has... She has a lot of lifesteal as well. So I think with this Melascula, you probably want to save up... Um, your burst damage cards. Or just Escanor. I don't think she's got any drains. So Escanor should be fine. I don't know, I feel like there was something else that I'm missing that I remember on my first pass. is like, oh, that's a bit annoying. But let's see what we can do. Oh, it's a bit, a bit dusty around here, mate. Okay, so we're going to move this Escanor card over here. We're going to use this one. Again, we've got Merlin and also Apple Pie, which allows us to start with two alt gauge. Um, so we can always rush Escanor's ult. <laughs> So she's going to heal up a little bit there. Oh, actually, she doesn't have anywhere near as much lifesteal as a usual Malascula does. Because Malascula has like 60, 50, 60% lifesteal on her base, I think. It's like a pretty crazy amount. But yeah, I think it's all the damage here that's a little bit, a little bit scary. But hopefully this just one shots. <laughs> yeah, perfect, mate. Perfect. Cool, cool. Well, let's um, <laughs> move on to the uh, the next fight, shall we? Do we fight Esterosa here? I think there's maybe an Esterosa fight. I'm still on Chapter 4 because I don't feel like doing Story Mode, even though I have a full UR team. Oh, Roy! You just got Zerg through it, dude. It's like, it's pretty quick to get through. You're missing out on mad rewards, bro. Like, if you... Uh, because going through story also updates your patrol mission rewards. It updates your um, uh, daily rewards as well. Just gives you loads of gems and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, dude. Like, it definitely... Uh, I feel like it becomes more fun the deeper you go into it. Like past... Um, what was that? Like chapter 9, chapter 10. Like a lot of the, the boss fights start to be little puzzles. But it's quite quick to get through. Oh, pardon me if you got the right setup. Okay, we got Red Esterosa here. This one gives me scary vibes for chapter 12. But it is just a red one, so he's got... Moves one debuff, increases attack. Yeah, there's nothing uh, to worry about here, so he should be pretty good. Do I know when the Goddess Liz banner will come out on Global? I have no idea, but I would estimate... Um, like, uh, sometime in the next month and a bit. Depends, like, if the 
if the KOF collab doesn't come to Global soon, then it's probably going to be in the next few weeks. Um, but if the KOF collab does come, we're probably going to have that collab. Maybe like one or two dead banners after that, and then the Goddess Liz banner. So yeah, I wouldn't say it's uh, too far away. Because there really are a limited amount of characters that can be released now. We're still missing like the movie units, Glocks, Red Fat King, uh, Matrona as well. I think they'll probably do something like... Um, you know, like, before Lost Vane Meliodas, there was, like, free tickets for uh, Arthur. They're probably going to have that. And then Matrona, but with the Matrona banner, and then the week after, it's going to be, um... Uh, what is it? Goddess Liz. So, yeah, I think they'll probably do that. Like, KOF collab, maybe a Glocks banner after that. Then maybe Matrona banner, and then maybe Goddess Liz. Unless they chuck in the movie stuff, because they could do the movie stuff for, like, two weeks... But the thing is, already they've left the movie stuff so late that the characters are, um, like, pretty relevant for the current meta. And I think especially after the KOF collab, like, <laughs> you know, it's it's going to be hard to make people summon on the movie banner, I would assume. <laughs> like, Alate or Alat, uh, I forgot exactly how to say her name, but she's she's a nice one for the whales if you want to get a super tryhard uh, try knighthood boss score. Aside from that, um, I don't think I don't, don't believe Bellion is the uh, the most spicy unit. I haven't played actually with uh, either properly. But I've just heard uh, some very unexciting reviews from both. Okay, nice. I think we are past the commandment fights now, so let's uh, move on. I think we're almost at the uh, the ruin and uh, Frisia one. But yeah, I didn't summon for Lost Vein on the free-to-play, so I definitely got summon on Goddess Liz and make sure I've got my uh, 900 gems ready for that. But the way it's going, man, I should have enough to summon on both uh, KOF if that does come next week, and also Goddess Liz. So that's uh, put ourselves in a great spot there. Let's get, um, let's get Arthur off the association here. Uh, who else has gear on the sub? I think my... Blue Meliodas does. He has some gear. And who else? Oh, actually, I think I'll put Demon Meli back on the front then. Can you find some demons here? Oh, is Demon Meliodas... Okay, he's restricted now. So, yeah, maybe we just keep Merlin. Or we could go for Gotha. Mm. I, th I think I switched to Gotha. I think, yeah. I think I need Gopher for, for the the next one that's tricky, but I forgot exactly what the stage does. So we'll uh, we'll find out soon. But let's chuck on um, my Pierce set um, or health set. Uh, let's just go for the Pierce set, man. Why not? It's all fun and games. Right, let's go. Yeah, Lost Vane is on uh, Goddess Liz. When is Liz Banner coming? You only have 110 diamonds. I'm gone, Shaft Hard. Oh, dude. <laughs> well, Liz Banner should be coming in. Um, what is it? A few. Uh, oh, I don't know why auto turned on then. I'm pretty sure I didn't have it on auto a second ago. But yeah, Liz Banner is probably about a month to a month and a bit away. So, but we don't know how long it's going to last as well. So maybe in that time, I think if you grind everything, um, you should just about be able to hit 900 gems, especially with a KOF collab coming. But you probably have to skip out on the KOF collab <laughs> all the way out. It's one of the two. But yeah, I should have just rushed Escanor Zolt. I didn't see it was on auto there. Might be able to get some big old damage here, though. Maybe he's going down, bro. Maybe he's going down. Yeah, straight in the bin. Good old Gotha upgrades, man. I still need to do a Halloween Gotha showcase on JP. I haven't even uh, tested him out yet. Weren't you saying uh, a minute ago, Roy, that you hadn't done... Uh... Yeah, you said story mode is so boring. I'm on Champ the 4. Well, that's... Uh... <laughs> 
that's uh, that's your source of gems sorted there, man. There are lots of gems via the story. Once you get to, um, uh, what is it? Like, every single chapter that you do is 30 gems. Uh, bonus once you finish it. Uh, past chapter 6. Because the first 6 you need to, like, do all the town stuff 100%. But then past that it's a nice time because you can just chill a little bit. Maybe have Merlin here as well, just so I can rush ulti, but it doesn't matter too much. Let's go for upgrade on Escanor. We can get it next turn, as long as we can draw a single Escanor card. But yeah, he looks really, really good. I was watching some of Nag's videos, man. Looks just like a slightly better version uh, of the red one. But the red one's attack disable is still so nice. Like that. Does uh, does screw over a lot of uh, players and matches in the right scenario. So I do appreciate that. Oh, actually, I did use a heal, but I think we're blocked from healing. So yeah, Eskinor already gets the heal benefit. It doesn't matter too much, anyway. Episode 192. I, th I think... Are we almost at 192? We might be. I'm just trying to remember what they are. If you tell me, like, what boss it is, I can maybe point you in the right direction. It's 192 in Chapter 12, actually. So I think we're on, like, 170-something or 180 now. Is 192 the Demons? Or is that Estorosa? Yeah, we're on 179. Like, I, I don't associate, uh, what is it, episode numbers with stuff, but we do have a, a chapter 12 um, hard boss fights guide on the channel, just to point you in the, the right direction there. What you could be doing in certain stuff. Is 192 the, um, uh, what is it, the Gustav Gotha one? It's like the Gustav Hauser, I think it's that one. Yeah, Gotha is the key, Gotha and Attack Disable. Yo, what's up, Kabuki? Hopefully you're doing well, man. Dude, I'm just saying, bro, you've made, I think, about four times the amount of Genshin Impact videos that I have, my friend. But, believe it or not, people are <laughs> people are still playing Seven Deadly Since Grand Cross. I can't believe it myself either, bro. Dead game, but it, it, still, uh, <laughs> it still does truck on. But hopefully you're doing well, mate. Right, so this is the, uh, the fun one where we have to bring in Rune and Freesia. So... I think we go for, um, who do we want on the front line actually, maybe Rune? Let's get Freesia for the uh, damage increase there. Now I think I've got a, a Rune somewhere, or Ruin. Let me uh, activate the green class filter as well. Oh, he's, he's down here, he's level 30, oh my god. Oh, I don't have enough CC of him. Right, we got we got to level this man up, man. It's a live rank up and gameplay. Well, there's not going to be no gameplay because he's just going to be on the sub slot. But I need a, a bit more combat class there. Let's do it, though, lads. Okay, we're going to gamble 150% bonus. Come on. Dun, 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 dun. And we failed. So that's a terrible time. But here's what it is. <laughs> Ways to get gems in high PvP, complete the story and complete the village request, and then get max levels and villages. Yeah, for new accounts, that is uh, a really good one. But we ain't buying any gems, some. We just haven't summoned in uh, almost three months now on the free-to-play. But it has been crazy, man. I'm just trying to think, do I need the two-star ones? I think it's the two-star ones I'm after here. I had to skip out on Lost Fame Meliodas, bro. I've just been getting getting bullied by all of these alt rushes. But soon, my friend, Goddess Liz, she's going to be right in the bag. And we can start bullying everybody on the free-to-play. I'm tremendously excited for it. Right, three-star. That'll be enough. Let's evolve him one more time. Get him up to SSR. And then I think that should be good. Should give us just enough CC to... um. Go first, because that's like the main thing. It's the cost to evolve him again. To be honest, it's not like that expensive to evolve him again. I, th I'll, I think I'll just evolve him one more time. Let's 
trade in a few of these grimoires. Oh, no, sorry. I want to uh, exchange it for a lower material. Where's the boy? Oh, there he is. Let's go. You are rune for the story. It's got to be done, mate. It's got to be done. I need to, like, take him up to UR as well for reverse stages. Because uh, I do need to do Season 2 reverse stages on the free-to-play, man. A lot of uh, Part 2 SSR tickets there. A few uh, cheeky gems as well. Small Wing King ain't coming in time. Yeah, he won't be out for a while, man. Got another, like, three and a bit months, I would estimate, before we see that magical character blessing us with his uh, fun <laughs> press all the debuff cards game plan. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's put in uh, Freesia there. And we should be good. Check somebody on support. Where's my Meliodas here? Perfect. I should get him on support over here. Don't need to worry about the association over there. Alright, we should be good to go. I'm just trying to rem remember their cards again. So yeah, they've just got attack cards, right? Apart from this um, uh, Ignite card. So I think three out of four of the cards can be um, overcome via attack disable. Gotha is... he's the goat, man. The goat for dealing with these angry villagers. Works really well in Chapter 12 for the, uh, the angry villagers stage after Esterosa. But here... They don't remove debuffs, do they? No, they don't. So if we go for this play on Gotha, upgrade, and then we upgrade again, and then fire this off. Then that cancels out all of the attacks aside from uh, right-hand side. And then we just nuke him with Escanor. So let's go for this fella. Um, actually, I'm just going to like throw this off to max. Actually, do we just upgrade Escanor? Yeah, I'm just going to upgrade Escanor for the fun here. Nuke into this one. We are going to take like a little bit of damage next turn. There are three cards. If Escanor could one shot here, that'd be great. Not quite. Yeah, the damage off that card really isn't too bad. Uh, so let's go for Gotha's ulti. Fire this off. Should one shot right? Oh, actually, no. He's got a lot of hit points in all fairness. How much does the middle one have? Okay, I think we just go for the follow up. I'm hoping this one gets the left hand side down. I didn't. Hoping that one shots. It didn't. <laughs> uh, okay, we were a little bit short there, but it's it's fine, man. It's fine. We still chilling, boys. We're still on a, a great uh, pace to win this. We got another attack disable as well that we can merge next turn. But yeah, it really is those attack cards that hit much harder. But as you can see here, we got perfect play. We can just merge this straight into this. Actually, I think I'm going to fire this off. And then we'll go for this. And that completely cancels out their entire turn because they've got uh, uh, three attack cards there. So yeah, Gotha and Escanor are the key lads. You could, like, replace Escanor technically with just any, like, high damage output character. But yeah, that's uh, the basic way of how you want to handle that one. And then what's the, the second one? I think the second one's quite similar in terms of uh, what you go up against. But yeah, you definitely only want like one unit on the front line. Whichever one's your strongest. Will I be given draw, attack, or health gear? Uh, probably attack in the way that I want to play him. Because yeah, I just like um, a lot of damage on draw. Because he hits quite hard, especially if you have the, uh, uh, what is it, Red Tian on the sub. He hits really, really hard. So yeah, I, I like draw with a lot of damage output. And that single target detonate card hits really hard as well, man. There is some massive damage off that. J 
Righteous One versus uh, Lulia, Elizabeth, and Green Merlin. Congratulations. So, you know, I'm saving for Goddess Liz Banner. I've saved 270 gems, but I'm aiming for 900. Best of luck. You should be able to um, uh, get 900 uh, by the end of that banner. Again, we haven't even had the start of it yet. Okay, we've got Dreyfus there. What is this? Okay, this is just standard. Is this like green Dreyfus? Yeah, it's like nothing too crazy. So we should be good if we just um, upgrade. We just fire this off and then go for... Actually, incre we'll increase damage taken and then the Eskinal cards, I reckon. Don't feel like there's too much upgrade value just yet. At least for that first turn. We need to cycle through another ult we can do. But as long as that increased damage taken stays on, then yeah, it's just easy one shot. So yeah, I know a few people were struggling on these, uh, I think the first villager stage, but hopefully that runs through. Um, you know, showed you a way potentially around it. And then the second one, just, uh, <laughs> yeah, just rush. Eskinor's ult, easy clap, the Dreyfus, or Frowdren. GG, boys. When the Goddess Liz banner comes up, do I think it's worth going for more than one copy? Um, you want to definitely, like... What is it? Summon in intervals of 900 gems. So I'll probably only be going for 900 on my uh, free to play. But if you do have, um, what is it, 1,800, uh, you ideally want as many copies of her as you can get because her ultimate level is really, really good to have fully maxed out because it increases like the um, uh, the healing, the damage reflect, uh, the amount you heal from reflecting damage as well. It's just like a very important ultimate. Um, to ideally have maxed out. It, it's good at 1-6, but like it's crazy, crazy good at 6-6. Six, six. So yeah, she is a character ideally you do want to have 6-6. Six, six. Were there Demon Slayer collab leaks real or... I think there was some fake stuff going around. They're, they're very, very old. People are making uh, stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, I swear around like the AOT collab announcement, but yeah, there's nothing been officially confirmed, at least to the best of my knowledge when it comes to a Demon Slayer collab, although I would love to see one. It'd be a very, very good time. I have about 415 gems. Do I think you'll get enough to have 900 when the Liz comes out? Yeah, dude. Easily, man. Easily. If you're just actively playing PvP, uh, doing some story stuff, doing some of the events, like, it won't be a problem. I think if you're super sweaty and you grind everything in this game, um, you can get, what is it, like, 600 gems every single month? It's like the max. But you'll have, like, probably, like, four or five weeks till the Goddess Liz banner comes out if the King of Fightless collab does come out. But then after that, you'll probably have four weeks where, you know, the banner's available, so... Um, gives you like nine weeks to get the remaining 400 and a bit gems. So yeah, I don't think you're going to have too much trouble there, dude. Right. Just pinging about here. I think we are almost done with this now. So you just need to speak to uh, Zaratros. I don't remember there being any more fights. And then we're going to leave it uh, when we get to the demons. Because I want to do all of those on the Chapter 12 stream tomorrow. But it's been quite a nice time, man. We smashed through everything today. But Chapter 12 is where the uh, <laughs> the heightened sense of challenge in story content is. Is Demon Slayer good? Yeah, I really enjoy Demon Slayer, man planning on watching it. It depends on what else you're watching at the moment, but I think the best thing to do is, like, watch a couple of episodes, see if you get into it or not. But me and the missus, we watched it uh, last summer, and uh, yeah, it was amazing. You want to make sure... Um, I don't know, it's just nice to, like, we got, like, our living room all cozy, man, just kind of, like, you just kind of, like, get very immersed in the world. The animation and art style is um, absolutely phenomenal. So yeah, it's, it's nice if you can, like, really get into it. 
Oh, okay, we need to go back to, um... Uh, Danafor? Or no, uh, this is not Danafor, this is, um... Leonis, 16 years ago. Oh, okay, is this the bit where we're the ghost? I think it is. Get the pierce gear, uh, let's swap this gear. And then put the pierce gear there. Maybe I should have put attack stuff on Goat. I don't remember anything here being too tricky though. <laughs> in all fairness, let's get Lilia on the front lines if we can again. That's going to make it a bit easier. And then who's pretty good for my sub here? Let's bring in anybody for the stats. Go for Merlin there. Um, Arthur has some gear on him. So yeah, let's dive in. Yeah, I think one year anniversary is probably going to be uh, Winged King. Depends like how um, fast they start pumping stuff. It was one year anniversary. It's uh, start of March. It's not that far after Christmas in all fairness. So yeah, that is probably going to be Wing King. But yeah, Christmas is Christmas New Year is probably going to be Goddess Liz. Do I think I'll upload more Genshin? I'm not really fussed about like making content on Genshin. Unless, like, endgame PvP comes, or, like, raids come, and then I might do some live streams on it. But the game gets, um, it's quite fun and chill, um, and it's a nice little game that I enjoy playing on the side, but there's not really any new content after you reach, uh, Adventure Rank, uh, 30 or so. It's kind of just, like, the same bosses that you've fought previously over and over again. It's not, like, massive endgame to work toward, apart from the Spiral Abyss. Which is just those same bosses with additional uh, requirements. I just don't think there's much exciting endgame in it, in all fairness. I wish I had PvP though. I don't know how PvP would work in a game like um, Genshin. But that would be uh, a bit more of a draw in content wise. But I'll still play it on the side. It's, it's a game you can like play very casually. I literally play it for probably about 10 to 30 minutes every single day. Just quickly smashing out my resin and doing the resources and stuff. While auto farming some stuff in Grand Cross, it all kind of weaves together quite nicely. Oh, we're going to fight Forehead Man. Let's go. I think this is the brawl in the... Brawl in the tavern? So what's my opinion when it comes to the Seven Deadly Sins Season 3 animation? Um, it was, it was watchable, kind of. Um, but I'm looking forward to Season 4. I think Season 4... I may be incorrect on this, but I, is it being done by the same people that did, did uh, Demon Slayer? Obviously, it's not going to be the same style, but um, I think it's from uh, the same studio or company or something like that. So yeah, I've, I hope the Season 4 animation is going to be really, really good, because I feel like, um, you know, fans will drop off after the Season 3 animation, because... It was just like notoriously bad. Netflix did like a, a decent job uh, with the release, like spicing up a bit more. But it still isn't anything like, oh my god, this is the craziest fight I've ever seen. It's like just a bit, a bit more watchable. Is Rugal better than Kyo in PvP? Uh, yes, at least in my opinion. Rugal is uh, the best of all of the units. Shines more in geared PvP. He's still good in ungeared though, in all fairness, because he's got really high base uh, pierce rate. But he's like Blue Demon Meliodas, you know? Blue Demon Meli is pretty good in ungeared, but when it comes to geared scenarios, he's just like, whoa. Crazy. As long as there's not Red King on the back, then he's like, a uh, bit. But like, with Lost Vein Meli Alt Rush Man, Red King is uh, becoming more and more less common, I would say. Like, Pierce is one of those things that, even on JP, man, if you don't bring in Red King, um, you know, Pierce can, can just get you. <laughs> Pierce can be a, a very, very lethal team for a long time. In my opinion, it still hasn't fallen out of the, the JP meta. Because, yeah, it just claps so damn hard. And Dean Meliodas as well has that fantastic Corrosion card, which can get through Goddess Liz's shield. Um... And then you can just burst down with a few pierce cards. It does take uh, a bit of getting used to playing around, but it is possible for pierce teams to beat like Goddess Liz, Lost Fame, Meliodas, Salt Rush teams 
in geared, it's probably not an ungeared though. Actually, even an ungeared with like a Mega, Lilia, Dean Melly, there is a lot of firepower there. So yeah, part two SSR ticket, that's quite nice. I'm looking forward to the Demon King raid, boys. That's what we need. But I think uh, I think we're there. I think we're at the end of um, uh, today's live stream. We've just blitzed through chapter 10 and 11 in uh, an hour and a half. So that was a really, really good time. Let's go and uh, claim some of the gems. Got the chapter 10 ones. And when we beat the, uh, the first quest in chapter uh, 12, we can claim the 30 here as well. So that's a pretty good time. Get some more achievement points. Always pretty nice. Some more gems there. Additional title as well. Uh, Eternal. Okay, this doesn't have a... Uh, <laughs> I think that was the one for playtime, man. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for watching today's uh, live stream. I certainly do appreciate it. And if you did enjoy it, please do smash that like button. That would be greatly appreciate it. Uh, I'm aiming to be back tomorrow... Um, uh, on the channel, maybe like afternoon, midday, uh, to do chapter 12 on the free to play. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to get prepared for that, you know, mentally to take on all of those uh, super fun boss fights. But, yeah, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, take care. I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day. And now I'll just wait.